Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on CSRNet July 2024 solution. Today I will explain you how you can solve all questions related to the differential equation in this paper. Myself Dr. Harish Kar, you can follow my YouTube channel where you can find the playlist of CSR UGC net and you can see i have uploaded the videos related to the green function cauchy problem numerical analysis linear programming problem partial differential equation and many more of these solutions you can subscribe my youtube channel so that when i uploaded my next video you will get the notification now in this year that is a july 2024 i have observed the four questions asked that is two questions from the part c and two questions from the part b and you can see that how many marks you have obtained 4.75 each from the part c and three from each question in the part b and you can see that the total marks is easily you can obtain after solving the questions now let's see how discuss how we can attempt these questions in a simple manner read the statement very carefully in the examinations fine now consider the initial value problem whenever you have the initial value problem the first thing come in your mind is always this form fine now if you compare them your f will be sin y over 1 plus y raised to power 4 then which of the following statement are correct so this is the related to the part c 4.75 marks you can easily obtain from this there exist a positive y not such that the solution of the initial value problem solution means that is a y y is unbounded solution of the y is bounded every solution of the y is bounded solution of the initial value problem existence for all r so that means your target is to check about the y it means they are not asking you to solve the problem first of all fine so that's a very very simple you have to just look about that whenever there is a initial value problem clearly says that first of all the denominator part it can never be zero fine so that means and it's a sine function so you can easily say f is my continuous functions for all the values of the y fine because the denominator is non zero and this one moreover you can easily see that mod of f is less than of 1 plus y raised to power 4 and it is less than of the some quantity m so i have seen f is my bounded function clear now another thing how you can prove that solution is bounded or not now clearly say we all knows sin value is lies between 1 and minus 1 fine what what is the meaning of the bounded and unbounded what you want to observe you have to check the nature of the slope fine we have to define the nature of the slope so since so what is the value of the y dash so y dash is lies between minus 1 over 1 plus y raised to power 4 and 1 plus y raised to power 4 now if you increase the value of the y as much you can if y goes to the infinity that means y dash goes to the zero because this part is also goes to the zero this part also goes to the zero what does it means what is the meaning of the uh, y dash that means rate of the change is smaller and smaller so as you increase the value of the y that is a solution the rate of change becomes the smaller what does it means that means the solution is not growing infinitely or indefinitely fine whatever the value of the y you can choose and as much as large you can choose on the y the rate of change that is a slope will be smaller and smaller so what does it means that means y is bounded fine that means solution is my bounded so you can see every solution of the initial value problem is bounded is the correct answer now there is a positive y not such that the solution is unbounded since we have proved that every solution y this solution is bounded for all y so whatever the y not the solution is bounded there is a negative y not such that solution of the initial value problem is bounded yes because it is true for all y so that's also fine for every y node in the r the solution is existence for all x what does the meaning of the all x again a very simple if you remember my shortcut tricks which i have explained in my previous case 
first of all, you can check about the, because clearly say F is a bounded, Lipsy is continuous. If you prove that F is a continuous, differentiable and bounded, then the maximum of interval is always R. And you can see F is continuous, fine. F is bounded also. F is differentiable also because the denominator part can never be zero. Moreover, if you look about that partial derivative with respect to y, so this will be cos y over 1 plus y4 minus 4y cube over 1 plus y4 square of sine y. Now, you can check about this boundedness. I can take an absolute value. It will be less than or equal to 1 plus y4 plus 4y cube over 1 plus y4 of square. Now clearly say this has the highest degree than of the numerator. Definitely it will be less than of the m. So partial that means it satisfies the Lipschitz continuous. So now f is bounded, f is continuous, f is differentiable. That means the maximum interval of the existence is my r. So yes, it is existence for all r is also the correct answer. So B, C, D are my correct answer of this problem. And you can see this lecture you can easily obtain at my YouTube channel. That is a lecture on the uniqueness and existence theorem. Okay, look at this another one. Again, this is related to the part C. And again, it's a very, very simple question. If X1 and X2 are the solution of the initial value problem, R is my this case, which are the following statement is my correct. First option said R goes to the zero as T tends to infinity. Kindly let me know what is the meaning of that T tends to infinity. That means steady state solution. Fine. So once is the steady state solution, that means the rate of the change will be my zero. So that means this part will be my zero. But now I have this coefficient. What will happen when e raised to power t? It goes to as t tends to infinity, it goes to the zero. So this complete portion zero, this complete portion zero. So my solution will be minus x1 plus x2 is zero, minus x1 minus x2 zero. So can you solve them? If you solve, you will get x1 is zero, x2 is equal to zero. And this case is happen only when t tends to infinity. When x1 is zero, x2 zero, then r will also goes to the zero as t tends to infinity. So the first option is the correct option. You can see that there is no need to solve the problem. Just look about the options and the given statement. Again, you can see the last option. As t tends to infinity, r will go to the zero and e raised to power in goes to the infinity. So we can't say that whether it goes to the zero or not. So we can't say anything. Now, how you can solve the remaining options? So we will see only the first option. I can discard it. I can correct it easily. Then in the, la in the rest of the option, I need to find the solution of the R. Can you find the value of R? So you can see R square is X1 square plus X2 square. Now I have the DX by DT form. So how you can obtain them? You can differentiate that 2R DR by DT, which is 2X1 into DX1 by DX2. So I can substitute this value minus into e raised to power t plus again 2x2 into dx by dt dx2 by dt i can substitute from this side now clearly say e raised to power t will be common and inside part is minus x1 square minus is a plus x1 x2 minus x1 x2 cancel it is my this portion so now 2 will be cancelled out fine so this value is my r square so one R is also cancelled. So that means dr upon dt, which is equal to minus R e raised to power t. So can you find the value of the R? Yes, you can easily solve that. Now you can separate the variables. dr upon dt is minus e raised to power t. So that means if you integrate them, minus e raised to power t plus c. So apply the initial condition. What is the value of the R of 0? x1, 0 is 1 and 1. So that will be ln of 1 e raised to power 0 plus c. c will be my 1. Log 1 is 0, it is 1. So my solution will be r 
एलेन ऑफ आर एस वन माइनस ई रेस टू पावर टी और यू कैन से आर विल बी ई रेस टू पावर वन माइनस फाइन ना लुक एट दी ऑप्शन वट इज एल एन ऑफ टू आर ऑफ एल एन टू सो दैट विल बी ई रेस टू पावर वन माइनस ई ऑफ एल एन टू इज माई टू सो ई रेस टू पावर माइनस वन सो एल एन टू ट्वाइस ऑफ दिस इज ए कैंसल लुक एट द लास्ट ऑप्शन आर इन टू ई रेस टू पावर टी सो आर इज माई वन माइनस सॉरी ई रेस टू पावर वन माइनस ई रेस टू पावर टी इन टू ई रेस टू पावर टी एज टी टेंस टू इन्फिनिटी दिस विल बी इन्फिनिटी दिस विल बी जीरो सो जीरो इन टू इन्फिनिटी सो आई कैन चेंज इन टू दैट जीरो बाई जीरो फॉर्म माइनस वन नाउ इट्स जीरो बाई जीरो फॉर्म आई कैन अप्लाई दूल सो दिस इज ई रेस टू पावर टी ई रेस टू पावर टी माइनस वन इन टू ई रेस टू पावर टी ना क्लियरली से द आंसर इज वन ओवर e raised to power t minus 1 it goes to the zero as t tends to infinity because this part will become the infinity so yes this answer is also correct a b d are my correct answer of this problem so you can see it's a very simple little bit think about that i agree but you can easily easily approachable in the examination once you have do before the examination you had did a lot of practice on the differential equations don't forget to like and comment on the video now this is related to the part b so you will get a three marks after getting the correct answer consider the initial value problem y dash which is square root of y plus epsilon such that y of y not is y not then there exists more than one solution there exists more than one solution again they are not asking you to solve the problem fine so which shortcut tricks come in your mind if you remember my shortcut tricks you can see that it is similar of that the only difference is instead of this model assign firstly i can convert into the simplest form i can choose h is my y plus epsilon so definitely h dash will be my y dash so therefore this differential equation becomes h dash is square root of modulus h fine now it is a similar it has more than one solution it has more than one solution only when this part will be zero that is only when y zero is my zero but he said for all y not that's the wrong option c1 this one is false so c1 is false s1 is two s1 is two false now out of these two option we will see which one is the correct one fine moreover if you think about that y is a modular sign again i can remove that you can see your h will be y plus epsilon fine you can choose any epsilon which is greater than 0 let's say 1000 for all y i can choose y which is greater than of the minus 1000 which is a part of again on this fine it's is a part of the y so clearly say whenever y is greater than of this epsilon y plus epsilon is always positive fine so that means h is my positive if h is positive my differential equation will comes of this fine now you can see that alpha will be my half as per this definition fine alpha will be half the coefficient is my plus a is positive so it has infinite solution only when y when cof c that is a y not is my zero but you can see i have taken any number if i choose y is equal to minus of 3 or if i choose y is equal to 71 so y is if y is my positive then you have a unique solution so that means this option is cancel similarly we can see about here there is a y not such that it has more solutions so it has more solution only there is a y not there is a y not so that's true okay so there is a y not if i choose y not is say for example minus 7 and it existence for all epsilon so what is the value of the epsilon if if i choose this is my 9 for all then the value of this h is my positive and in that case this value 
this value will be my unique solution fine or you can choose the value of the y not is my 71 or any of the other things are there so that means again but if you choose y not is my minus of epsilon fine y not is my minus of epsilon then only you can get as the more than one solution but he said for all so that's why again this option is also cancel out because if you choose y not is my minus 3 i can choose epsilon is 7 so clearly say this number y not plus epsilon is my positive so you will get this case in that case you will get a unique solution but again he said more than one solution so the right option is fourth is my correct answer Okay, look at this another one. This is again the parts B. Let Y phi denote the solution of the initial value problems of this case. So let me firstly expand this quantity. So this is X Y double dash plus Y dash minus two Y dash plus Y over X is equal to one. Now, if you cross multiply them, it's a X square Y double dash is a minus Y dash. So it's a X Y dash plus Y is equal to X. Do you remember which equation is this? It is my cauchy euler equations. Once it's a cauchy euler equation, you can substitute x is e raised to power z. So this quantity becomes d into d minus 1 minus of d plus 1 of y is e raised to power z. So that becomes d square minus 2d plus 1 of y is e raised to power z. Now can you find the auxiliary? What is the complementary solution? So you can get the roots as 1 and 1. So your solution will be C1 plus C2z into e raised to power z. Can you find the particular integral? This is 1 over d square minus 2d plus 1 of e raised to power z. So it's a 0 by, it's a 1 over 0. I can take it as a z. It's a twice into e raised to power z because 1 is occurring as a 2 times. So what is my final solution? So my final solution will be C1 plus C2, Z I can take as a ln of X into X plus ln of X square divided by 2 into X. Now you can check about the options. Your target is to find the value of the phi of E. That is my phi of X. So what is the answer of the phi of E? It is my C1 ln of e is my 1 or log you can take as a log instead of the ln you can take as a log fine so this is my e log of e is 1 e over 2 now how you can find the c1 and c2 i can use this value y of 1 0 so log of 1 0 log 1 0 so that becomes c1 is 0 y of e raised to power 4 is 4 times e raised to power 4 so what is the meaning of that is a C1 is 0. So e raised to power 4 is 4 C2 e raised to power 4 plus it's a 4. 4 square is 16 over 2 is a 8 e raised to power 4 which is 4 e raised to power 4. Clearly say C2 will be my minus 1. So I can substitute this value. It's a minus of e plus e over 2. So minus e over 2 is my right answer of this problem. So you can see that uh, differential equation problems are very simple and I hope you can like, share and comment on this video as well. So you can see all these four questions which is related to the 4.75 marks plus 4.75 marks and 3 plus 3. So you can see that easily you can obtain 9.50 marks and it's a 6. So that's the 15.50 marks easily obtained from the differential equation. Let me know in the comment box how many questions you have corrected from this differential equation in this. Don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel and we will wait for the next video very soon. Thank you very much. Happy learning.